I had a question come in about number 19, and the <clears throat> task is to write out 7 as a linear combination of 84 and 19. And so we've got um, these inputs of 84 and 119, and so it looks like a lot of people are doing pretty well with the Euclidean algorithm to go through and find that GCD. So I went ahead and just completed that process, and um, I'm going to work with that um, from there. From I'm going to complete this process from that point. So the next step is to take this work that you've done to find the greatest common divisor between these two integers, 119 and 84, and use that work that you've developed with the Euclidean algorithm to have it tell you how to express one uh, that GCD as a linear combination of its two inputs. <clears throat> and the reason it works is because, <coughs> excuse me guys, We've got three equations that are all really interrelated. So it's like I've got a system of equations that says something like x plus y, you know, equals z, and x, 2x plus 3y equals r, and then I've got z plus I'm just making stuff up here, 7y is equal to x or something. So we've got three equations here that are all connected, and I'm not even sure if these actually have a solution or not, but um, in the case of this process, they definitely do because those x's, y's, z's, and r's are aligned in an exactly really nice way so that we can combine them all with a process to find that linear combination. So depending on the resource that you look online, um, you're going to see different examples of how to complete this process. This is the particular one that made sense with me and really connected with me, so that's what I'm going to show you. That's not to discourage you from trying to do it another way. If something you found works, then, then go with it. Um, and if you wanted me to try to make a video or something explaining that way, I can certainly try to do that. But this is the way that I find to be easiest, and so that's what I'm going to show you here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is start by solving for each of my remainders. So with the Euclidean algorithm, these are the remainders in each of my equations. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. And the reason I'm doing this, I guess, is to have some value that I can always get at, you know, because that, rem that remainder follows us all the way through, right? Um, like 35 bumps from here to here to here, 14 bumps from here to here. So 35 actually connects all of these three equations. So these remainders are really powerful. Um, and because if you think about all the other numbers, none of them appear in all three equations, right? So um, <clears throat> we will take a look at those remainders and use that connection to find this linear combination. So I'm going to solve for all the remainders. So for that first equation, if I solve for 35, I'm going to get 119 minus 84. And if I solve for 14, I'm going to get 84 minus 35 times 2. If I solve for 7, I get 35 minus 14 times 2. Okay, now I've written these in a way that I don't really like. Um, I want to focus in on some values here, and hopefully it makes sense why I want to focus in on them. So the values I want to focus in on are 119 and 84, okay? Um, and then the any new remainder, I'm going to also want to focus in on that one. So I'm going to want to focus in, and, and these are going to be like my variables, okay? They're really numbers, but I'm going to treat them in the manipulation of this process just like I would a variable in that example that I had written up before um, with all those random letters, right? So I'm going to be focusing on those terms and think think about them as variables as you're doing this, okay? And, and don't think about them as 
numbers because you don't want to actually manipulate those values. You want to leave them intact and not change those. So don't change 14, 35, 84, and 119, okay? So what we're going to do um, is just back substitutionables a bunch of times. We're going to start by taking 14 instead of 14 here. We're going to write this representation. We're going to simplify it to get it in terms of 84s and 35s. Then we're going to substitute in for 35s. Okay, so we don't have that equation yet, so it's not literally going there, but um, okay. And then we're going to have all our three equations combined and compiled into one. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to write out this remainder, the system of remainders here in a little bit prettier way so that it's written as a linear combination with, with a, with a addition in between, just so that we can get at that coefficient and understand a little bit better and not mess with that subtraction. I think that might make things a little bit easier. So let me write 35 is equal to 119. So I can think about one of those. I could put a coefficient of one, but that might be misleading. So I'm just going to, you know, plus a negative 84 instead of that subtraction. Now remember, I'm trying to focus in on 119s, 84s, 35s, 14s. And so when I see that 35, I want to write it out with a coefficient out in front. So I'm going to write that coefficient in front and 35, just because I think having a coefficient in front, to, you know, is pretty typical. So when you're dealing with variables, and so hopefully it'll help you when you're trying to combine these like terms. And then I'm also going to do that with 7. So I have 35. Again, I like that 14. That's what I'm interested in. So I'm going to move that coefficient out in front so it's easier to manipulate. <clears throat> All right, so remember, I want to get an equation that's equal to 7, okay? So I actually, I want to start with this equation because I, I like this part, and then I only have to mess with one side of the equation. Um, and really, it's okay to mess with either side here because I'm not, as long as you're just substituting in equivalent values, right, that's all we're doing in this process, then it's okay. But we don't want to do with that, like, the less sides we mess with, the less likely we are to go astray. So that's good. Um, so I'm just going to write this in a different color so that we can hopefully, you know, that will help. So what I'm going to do is use this equation next. And the way I'm going to do that, right, we're going to focus in on that right-hand side again. And so I'm going to start here with this equation. But instead of 14, notice how 14 is here, I'm going to write this representation for 14. So instead of 14, I'm going to write 84 plus negative 2 times 35. So let me just write that in there. 84 plus negative 2 times 35. Okay. Oops, and let me change my colors here so I can have some distinction there with what's being changed. So everything else is staying the same because I like that equals uh, 7. Okay, remember the, the values that I don't want to touch and I want to treat like, um, I want to treat them like variables. So let's focus in what we've got here. We've got 84 that appears there, also 35. Okay, so I'm going to write this out as a linear combination of 85, or no, excuse me, 35 and 84. Okay, so it's nice. I didn't have, oh, oopsies. Look, 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 I messed up. Um, I forgot that negative 2. That's important. Okay, hopefully everybody was thinking, where'd that negative 2 go? Okay, it should be there. Um, <clears throat> so before I can combine them, before I can combine this 35 with something in here, I need to take care of this negative 2. And this negative 2 applies to both of those values in that expression. So I'm going to have negative 2 times 84. Also, I'll have negative 2 times negative 2 times 35. So that's, I mean, that coefficient out front is kind of handy, right? You don't have to do a lot of manipulation there. So I have 35. I'm just going to keep simplifying here before I combine too much. So I need to know how many 35s here I have, and I have four of them. I have four 35s. 
So if I focus in on those values, right, those variable-like values, I've got 135 here, four more here, so that means I've got five in total. This is my only term with 84, so I'm just gonna leave him alone. So I write that out. I've got seven is equal to five times 35 plus negative two times 84, okay? Now I've used this equation. I've used and substituted this equation the best I can. Now the only one left is 35. So let me write this. So now I'm just gonna substitute in this last one here. So instead of 35, I'm gonna write 119 plus a negative 84. So 35, I'm gonna have 119 plus a negative one times 84. And again, what are those values that we wanna focus in on? And what do we wanna end up with? Well, we want it to end up with a linear combination of 84 and 119. So we're getting really close here, right? Because I've got, um, I've got, you know, here's my values, let's see. I'm gonna do green this time because we're towards the end here. I've got 84s, I've got 119, so I can figure out how many I've got and, and combine like terms. But again, we've got that coefficient of 5 out there, and it's multiplying both terms in that expression, so I need to make sure to distribute that. Plus, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Okay. All right, and we're getting closer, right? Um, so now, if I think about these like variables, right? Let's see, I've got 119. That's my only 119, so he's just good. It's 5. Um, and if I got 84, I've got negative 5 of them, and I add negative 2 of them. So that means in total I've got negative 7 84s. Okay? 5 times 119, 7. Now let's make sure that I did that. Oh, phew, good. Um, so always, yeah, once you get to that linear combination, multiply it out with your, cal with your calculator to make sure that, you know, you did it all correctly. And then also, check it with that Excel spreadsheet that we built in one of those videos that's posted. You know, if I type in, if I type in 119 and 84, I get, uh-oh, oh no, yeah, 5 and negative 7. That's good. 5 and negative 7, these are those coefficients. So everything looks good. Hopefully that helps with that process. It's something that takes practice um, and you'll get used to it. And really, you know, I like this coloration here and this highlighting of those values that we want to focus in on. Um, so think about them like variables. And uh, yeah, and if it helps, you could even, you know, rewrite this whole system with variables instead. You know, you could call 35A, you could call 119B, you could call 84C, and you could call 14D, and then go through and, and combine those terms, okay? Let me know if you need clarification, guys.